Hi, my name is Rachel and today we're doing an Authors Behaving Badly. Today's author is Lauren M. Davis. This is an author that everybody has been talking about across social medias and if you don't know what I'm talking about, lucky you because it was a dumpster fire. Lauren M. Davis is a self-published author of a book called Nova's Playlist who recently became book Twitter's main character after she accused another author whose name is Marv Anson who is tagged down below. You should go follow her and add her book on Goodreads which is also linked down below. So Lauren M. Davis accused Marv Anson of stealing her idea of a main character who had powers from the sun and then said it was a valid concern because Marv is Nigerian, which is an objectively terrible thing to say. And at every turn, Lauren M. Davis quadrupled down. Lauren self-published her book Nova's Playlist and then she tried to query it with an agent who just happened to be Marv's agent. Her Twitter for you page ends up with Marv's tweets, one of which says, Ember Quartet meets final strife, deadly trial, secret orders, African myth, friends to lovers, royal sibling rivalry. This Yoruba inspired hero's journey explores the dance of politics, the lives of kingmakers, and an heir destined to bring ruin. This very specifically appeals to me. <laughs> Everybody knows how much I love the Ember Quartet. So Lauren sees this and she's like, huh, that sounds like my book. It doesn't. Marv is set to publish this book, which is going to be called Firstborn of the Sun next year, and it's based on Yoruba legends. She posts about her book, and again, it appeals to me greatly because I love An Ember in the Ashes, and it sounds really good. She tweets about it again, saying, the world I built is stressfully complicated and so utterly brilliant, if I do say so myself. Go off. I'm excited for you. I can't wait to get my hands on it. Lauren M. Davis decides to tweet, Dear Marv with an E, I have tried to reach out to you privately regarding copyright infringement, but have received no response. Please take your tweet down because Lauren saw this tweet from Marv and decided to respond with she wouldn't happen to have the power to wield the sun now would she and Marv said LMAO she most definitely does so I just want to point out that that is all that Lauren said she wouldn't happen to have the power to wield the sun that is the thing that Lauren had many more characters she could have used there and she chose to talk about that Marv wrote a character that wields the sun so in this tweet she's upset and she's like this is copyright infringement and she highlights this piece and and everybody everywhere has mocked this to death because the writing is pretty poor quality. So it's this excerpt from Lauren's book where it says, Nova, you're a solar girl, but what is my power? You can control the sun. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the <laughs> You're a solar girl. What is my power? What do you think? So Lauren keeps popping up and bothering the fuck out of Marv, not unlike the spam calls that we've all been getting in the past couple of years where it's like, we've been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. So she DM'd Marv and allegedly she was calling and leaving voicemails for Marv's agency. So she sends this DM to Marv where it says, hey Marv, sorry to DM you like this, but we have, might have a copyright issue we need to discuss. Do you have an email? I will forward you something I've had for a while now and sent to a publisher last year, actually in 2021. So why is she bothering Marv? Because she was accusing her of copyright infringement. Why? I just want to make this so clear because her book, Marv's book, included the power to wield the sun and Lauren's unpublished book did as well. See, Lauren has this book. This is not the book that has the solar powers in it. Lee Bardugo is probably watching all of this go down on Twitter and just laughing hysterically. No one has a monopoly on the sun and that is just a ridiculous thing to say. Like Superman also has powers that come from the sun. Actually, let's take those two examples and talk about them. This series is a good point. Superman gets his powers from a yellow sun. In a red sun, I believe he loses his powers, but his power is not wielding the sun. Now, Alina Starkov does wield the power of sun, but only light. So you can see like even this idea of sun powers encompasses a wide variety of ideas that nobody has a monopoly on. Now, Lauren's book says that everyone has this thing that allows them to draw magic from the sun. This could mean a variety of things and all of them we have likely seen before. There is zero reason to have believed that Marv's unpublished book about a main character who has sun powers has stolen any copyrighted work from Lauren M. Davis. Davis. Marv wisely did not respond to the DMs. Marv blocked Lauren and Lauren did not like that very much. <laughs> Writers beware. If you steal my copyrighted work, passing it off as your own, you will be hearing from one of my attorneys, no matter what country you live in, especially if I reach out to you multiple times to solve the issue. Okay. So Lauren is still seeing Marv's tweets and sharing screenshots of them, by the way. Clearly Lauren has a burner account putting in the hours. And the most that Marv said was just like putting in some jokes about how nonsensical this is. Marv 
handled this way better than I would have had handled this, that's for sure. And initially it seems that Lauren is saying that Marv and her have the same idea, a main character with the power to wield the sun. Eventually it gets kind of confusing, even with Lauren going so far as to say, my book is banned, which as you all know is a pet peeve of mine. Uh, and that confusion is entirely because Lauren seems to have worms where her brain used to reside. Lauren then starts making tweets saying that Marv and possibly Marv's agent or agency stole her idea and then she decides that she's just going to flat out start saying things that are racist. Miss the 5 a.m. Writers Club hard holiday party tonight because I've had to get information together for my lawyer over this copyright nonsense. I am so mad. I'm more upset that someone who has been building on something I published years ago with Mel of the Ball as an international author leak that she extended to me out of kindness than I was for my divorce. This author took the storyline and plot for themselves and made it into what they wanted it to be. But it's basically the same plot. It looks like this girl used to be from Nigeria before she moved to the UK. Like, wow, you were already going to be an author. There was no reason for you to steal my work. That you had the nerve to send it to an agent as your own makes my blood turn to churning lava. That's very disgusting. Number one, that is a racist thing to say. Lauren's insinuating that Marv stole her work because she's from Nigeria. That's just racist. Uh, she's going to double down on her racism, so we'll just come back to that. Number two, the aforementioned newsletter of Melissa that uh, Lauren referenced was this, and if you look at it, you will see that there is no mention of sun powers. So I don't know why Lauren thinks that Marv had the even ability to steal her work, yet she's saying somehow Marv Marv saw this post, stole her work, but then later she decides to switch stories and say that someone in San Francisco logged into her account because she had tweeted that she had previously used Apple products and that's how the work got stolen. I'll come back to that later as well. So this starts picking up traction on the internet with many popular authors chiming in. This happened right after the Kate Corain situation so we were all already having discussions with each other anyway and along came Lauren to just give us something else to collectively stare at in horror. And Lauren is like, no, this is not about the sun powers actually. Shut up about the sun! Lauren decides to show proof that it's not just that Nova has sun powers, it's also that Nova is a black girl. And this is a discord message between her and her brother, allegedly. Yeah, not only was Nova black, so was this Marv person's character. We both wrote it for a young adult audience. I wrote mine starting in 2013 and ending in 2020. She supposedly starts hers in 2018, but her tweets and posts about it didn't start until after 2020. Her synopsis is basically everyone in the kingdom of Oro is born with Agbara, the the ability to draw magic from the sun. Everyone that is except Lore. When the gods call for her best friend's life, the home she grew up in becomes the prison she must escape. The Holy Order sends their deadliest assassins after her, but she just might be her own worst enemy. She must choose who needs saving, her family, her kingdom, or herself. Everything save the when the gods call for her best friend's life happens in my novel and series I've been querying. My kingdom's actual name is different and so is the name of the magic, but everything else is the same. That's what Lauren is saying that my Marv, a black woman, stole from Lauren, who is a white woman. At this point, I'm confused because if you look at this god-awful book cover of Lauren's, you infer a few things. First, this is terrible. Second, this looks like a contemporary book about a white teenager. Something with the plot must have to do with music, right? Uh, because the teenager is wearing headphones and the book is literally called Nova's Playlist. If you tell me that this is your lie in April fanfic, I might believe you. You know what I don't see? Anything remotely close to what Marv is writing, which is a book about a young black girl with sun powers based in Yoruba legend. You can see why this would be confusing for everybody, yes? Now I'm gonna be honest, I'm still confused about what Lauren M. Davis's book is about, but I'll read you the synopsis. Nova's Playlist from Cinders to Tiara. A story within a story within a story. This novel is about an older teen who has undergone a breakup in her home city of New York, New York. To cope with this, Nova writes a tale about a gamer named Lydia and a beautiful servant from the 18th century known as Avril. Avril who likes her normal life, but when Avril is asked to accompany her employer's daughter to a gala, she encounters, encounters, a, encounters, Rachel, oh my god, oh my god, encounters a young nobleman who harbors a divine secret, rescuing her from bandits and saving her from a four-story fall. This handsome gentleman astounds Avril. However, his ethereal abilities reveal his origins. He lures Avril onto his sailing ship, grudgingly parts with her to a slave trader, finds her again, then hides her in a celestial realm. Home never seems so far away. 
that yet perhaps Avril secretly wants more. Attempting to return to her world, she finds herself in an unfamiliar time period instead of her own. Originally from France, Avril takes the stage with her adventures and romantic interests in this first volume of the Princesses of Earth series, but Lydia and Nova are quick to follow suit in this new universe fantasy that is intertwined with mystery. So it seems to me that Avril is the black character and does not as of yet have the powers of the sun. She is sold into slavery though, which is a weird thing for Lauren to have written. But because it's a story within a story, the main Avril is, is not real, or maybe she is, but she's part of a story, uh, part of a game, and uh, yep, sure. All of this is definitely stuff that this cover does not convey. But this cover is made of AI art, and it's terrible. And this is why you should not make your covers with AI art on top of it being stealing. It's art theft. Don't do that. I'll talk about more about that in a few minutes. Now, some folks did read the sample of her writing, and one person even took the time to red pen edit it. I will leave a link down below. And a book talker, book talker named Grapey Del Taco did take one for the team and actually read the book so that we all don't have to. And here I'm going to show you what she said happens in the book because I, I, I want to show you what somebody who actually has read the book says about it versus what Lauren says is what the book is and that Marv somehow stole from her. So I read the book to get clarification and not only is it just like flat out garbage and incoherent and a mess, but also her behavior online is not the only issue regarding race from this author, unsurprisingly. The first like 150 pages are dedicated to the story of a white woman named Avril who was born in the 1700s in France and then she meets a celestial death god and ends up time jumping without any control. She ends up in New Orleans during the time of chattel slavery and is actually sold in a slave auction despite being white and gets flirted with by one of the slaves up for auction. It's written that like he winks at her while he's displaying his strength to be sold off. She's sold to like an evil Spaniard slave owner who tries to like bite her neck like a vampire, but then it's revealed he's a gargoyle and that she may or may not be turning into a gargoyle. Then she has to run to like these confederates for help. Then she finds herself with these cowboys, and then she finds herself with some indigenous people, and this is like the added layer of like grotesque representation. She runs into these two men that are like Navajo warriors in their tribe, and one of them calls her a white devil and then attempts to scalp her until one of the women from the tribe steps in to protect her. So then that guy that tried to scalp her is like, fine, I won't kill you, we'll take you back to my tribe, and maybe you'll make a good for me, um, which I'm 99% sure is a derogatory term that Lauren M. Davis does not have a right to be writing into her story. She gets saved, yada yada yada. She ends up in what I'm pretty sure are like the 60s or the 70s because there's references to hippie movements and then she becomes a cop. And then stuff happens, stuff happens. You get a little writing at the bottom of the page that says game over, plot twist. The story of Avril was a video game being played by a character named Lydia who I'm gonna assume is the white girl on the cover because she has headphones and also Nova's not white. Even though we go through the story of Lydia very briefly and then it's like plot twist, Lydia is a fictional character written by Nova so the story of Avril was a story within a story. And then the story ends and we don't even get to see that screenshot that Lauren M. Davis provided where Nova gets called a solar girl and she's revealed to have the power of the sun. So even if Marv with an E had read this book, which like no one has, there's no way that she could have plagiarized the sun power situation because it's not in this book. I'm also confused about the race of Nova because Lauren M. Davis claims that it's a black girl, but Nova calls herself a white girl in the story. So Lauren sees everyone talking about how not only is she racist, but her book features racism and also a main character who's a cop, which so is Lauren, and says, wow, how dare you all call me a racist and writes this in response. This is a rough, rough, rough draft that I just converted to a PDF. It was never meant to be shared with the public, but I've been watching your TikToks and reading your tweets. Oh fuck, that doesn't bode well for me, does it? Fuck. And articles, and I can see why you think I'm a racist person based on the writing I presented and where I am from and what I did for a living and who I confronted. Who I confronted? However, the South is a rich history in African-American roots besides those relating to slavery and I grew up around it and in it. Oh, the South has a rich history in African-American roots besides slavery. How did they get there? Okay. I grew up around it and in it. It is part of who I am. I don't think that's appropriate to say. I was trying to demonstrate the character's development by writing her into various situations in the real world and in a fantasy one. I was not placing her in that time period to inflict emotional harm or pain on anyone. Ah yes, but 
intention is not impact, is it? This work was not through being drafted to match the first book and will not have a sol solid ending because it is an extra document I had related to the plot devices in the second volume. Was this attached to like a, the, the next book or something? I had related to the plot devices in the second volume, which is gone now. Nova's playlist is the first one and it's about Avril. It's a world building book that introduces Nova as the main event at the end. This is your trigger warning. Even though I saw many tweets making fun of the Solar Girl story, I saw a lot of people amused by it on X. Ew, don't call Twitter X. Don't give Elon that. Keep in mind, because Nova, you're a solar girl, <laughs> was meant to be a parallel universe novella in the Princesses of Earth series. This world in the second book matches the world in the first book, Nova's playlist, that no one has purchased save two copies, but everyone has bomb reviewed on Goodreads. Saying this for you who thought this problem was rage bait. Also, please don't bomb review my writing because every time you do, I have to reach out to these po prominent companies and explain to them that you all are angry and that because you have stereotyped white people in Mississippi who are cops to be only one certain way that you see a white author versus a black author problem. I was going to try and be Marv's friend before all this happened and I was ignored, which made me think she had something to hide in law enforcement. If you pull somebody over and they immediately make a run for it, you're going to think they did something wrong and chase them down. I checked out her tweets to see if she had anything relating to her book that could prove to me I was wrong for the copyright on the sun notion, which was actually a copyright on the series notion. The sun powers were just the deciding factor for me after reading a few links she had in her tweets. I was afraid she was picking through my works and choosing what she wanted from them and plagiarizing the story. I don't think that's how plagiarism works though. And this is proof that you saw someone maybe doing a similar thing and decided they had committed an offense. Your only evidence was a black woman with sun powers. Something you admit is not even in your actually published work. Also, the algorithm connected me with her on my F for you page on X. It was because I had recently interacted with her agent and queried that agent without knowing who Marv was at all. That query has been rapidly withdrawn. Oh no, come back. It's easy to write another work. It is? I don't know. I have a lot of writers in my comments who I don't think feel that way. It's harder to keep your name untarnished in this industry. I mean, shutting the fuck up is free. <laughs> So here you go. This will explain why slavery was the lesser of two evils, a statement that Nova questions in the text, and why her mother brought her back to the year 1788. This has not been edited ever that I can remember, so you might not like it. This was just me trying to piece together the plot in 2020 while I was querying the first novel in the series. Disclaimer, Nova was always going to be written as a character who escaped slavery without being locked into it. Her stepfather, who is an evil god, owns that terrible place and her mother's soul, so he forced her mother to return to this time period. And just because you see a character die in a story, it does not mean they won't ever come back. P.S. For those of you who think, oh, she went on offline to type up some more bullshit up, that is not what I've been doing. My apartment burned in Alabama and I lost my things and I've had to get the fire report together with every other document and receipt you can think of. And I just didn't ha be have it because it was in the apartment all for my insurance adjuster. And then she links to a news report about a, a fire. I recently moved back to Mississippi to restart, not to be judged because I am from there. The whole Nigerian thing was never about race. It was about me being worried that my work was being stolen by somebody from a country known for cyber related crimes. Something former police officers worry about. See, you're not doing what you think you're doing here. What you're doing is making it so that now we don't trust cops even more. Also, why would I need to Google that question about crime for in Nigeria for myself if I worked in law enforcement? Did you work in law enforcement in Nigeria? I didn't. I knew that if I just posted a statement about it that you would ask for a source. So that's why I put that screenshot on my ex. If she had been from China, I would have been posting the same thing relating to that country because some from there have been conducting cyber attacks lately. Mainly hacks though. It's just like people worldwide who fear us for American type mass shootings because unfortunately that has become what we are known for. Well that's disingenuous as fuck but I'm gonna be honest I don't typically trust cops anyway and Lauren is not an exception. She did in fact post a tweet saying yeah I did say that Marv was Nigerian and that was relative to her stealing my work because Nigerians are known for cyber crimes. But the racism did not end there. Oh no. She did not take kindly to being called a racist, so she decided to be racist in response. It seems that she can excuse racism, but she draws the line at being called one. So when told that, hey, the representation of native folks in the book is racist, she says, I did meet with represent rep representatives of different tribes before writing anything to do with Native Americans. Also, if you've ever read the classic The Last of the Mohicans or anything relating to the expeditions of Lewis and Clark, then maybe you would find my novel less reprehensible 
sensible and give more context in the time period. Oh man, my dyslexia is real bad right now. I'm sorry. And somebody was like, okay, what rep what representative? And she said, that's my business. I can't relay that information. Some tribes swear you to secrecy before they reveal secrets about themselves and even go as far as to make you sign a document agreeing to protect their story. Sorry, I can't give you an example without doxing myself or them. Yeah, that sounds like a totally real thing that happened. So she decides to tell the whole internet in response to being called a racist every single alleged time that she wasn't treated well by black folks and every time that she was not treating black folks like shit. Lauren M. Davis is scammed by Nigerian and South African men who pretend to be in love with her and say they are American soldiers who are stranded overseas and need money and is labeled as a profiling racist ex-cop. For those of you pulling the race card out for the situation, get your own in line first before throwing accusation like that to someone who trained with, fought with, and protected people of color. And this is a video of teenagers, a white kid and a black kid getting into a fight. She has a screenshot of Marv saying, what white, uh, saying me this morning, and it's the gift that says, what white nonsense is this from Kimmy Schmidt. And Lauren has a screenshot of this and says, also interesting, this was her response to seeing it and blocking me. I mean, that's not a racist comment at all. You're right. That is not a racist comment at all. That's not how racism works. Captain Harmon pinning on my badge and bars at my academy graduation. Crazy that my dad was there and my lieutenant, but I wanted Harmon to do the honors. And you know what? People didn't like Pride and Prejudice when it first came out either, or Lord of the Rings, or Great Gatsby, or Lord of the Flies, or Moby Dick. Over a hundred years later, here we are. I might not have create, meant to create a controversial piece, but it looks like that's what has happened. Eh, wrong. That's not what happened. <laughs> that is not what happened here. You didn't create a controversial piece. You did a racism on Twitter, and now everybody is pointing it out to you. Your work is not controversial. Your work has some shitty writing and some racism in it, a la tons of other badly written pieces of books that despite you querying and querying will never get picked up because they are poorly written and racist. That's not you making the next Moby Dick. That's just you making a dick out of yourself. Instantly unknown to infamous overnight. The thing about this is that I have seen this happen. Uh, I mean, this is a series I do on my channel. I have seen this happen so many times and people will not remember this in a year. People won't remember this in six months. There's going to be four other authors doing something egregious within the next six weeks and this will be forgotten about. And then somebody next year is going to be like, remember that time that Lauren M. Davis decided to talk about Marv's book? Marv's book, which is actually great. Like that's probably what's going to happen. I, I've, I've been doing this a while now and I feel like that's probably, probably the case. Let's not delude ourselves into thinking this is something that it's not. Infamous overnight. That's crazy. And for those of you judging my racism that I've been labeled as having, God knew my true intentions and knows them now. I will continue to stand up for myself. Okay. Lauren M. Davis is labeled a bad writer because she uses AI images only to support her work. Mm, no, you were labeled a bad writer because this looks like shit. Also, people were not pointing out that you're a bad writer because you use AI. They were pointing out that you hold double standards because you were complaining about something being copyrighted that you don't have a copyright on while using AI images to make money despite the AI images likely coming from stolen work from authors who did not consent to having their work put in an AI generator. That's what people were pointing out. All right, gets told to hang herself and is blocked by many in the author community. Okay, those two things are very, very different. The first one, terrible. Make sure to report. In fact, post it so that the rest of us can report those accounts too. Nobody should be telling anybody else to kill themselves, period. If you ever see it, tag me in it so that I can report it too. I don't care who it is, I'm in a report. And I hope that you will all do the same for others. But being blocked and being told to kill yourself are two very different things. Gets a formal rejection in her email this morning from Barnes & Noble saying that they will not be selecting her book as an item available on the shelf in store. That That's a business deciding that they likely can't make a profit off of you because this cover is terrible. You've gotten feedback from tons of readers saying that this book is, has a really bad cover. And also somebody took a red pen to your, your book and gave you like very, very good feedback. You should probably consider that the book is poorly written and the cover is terrible. And that's why Barnes and Noble sees no point in stocking it because they can't sell it. If they can't move product, the business is not going to put money into you. Gets told her writing for young adults that she extended to the public for free and for a low price online is only a one star type of book that she writes like a 10 year old when she never had a rating before this because her book was still new. Yeah, I don't think that anybody would have seen your book if it was not for, for all of this, um, which is why some people are like, oh, this is a ploy to get, this is like a bad marketing tactic. She did this on purpose. I don't think that Lauren did this on purpose, but I, I do think that, that it's worth pointing out that probably nobody would have, I would have never seen this book in my life and a lot of people wouldn't have if it hadn't been for Lauren throwing a huge temper tantrum. Gives parts of her paycheck to several African American homeless so that they can have bus fare and buys them food is labeled a racist. Gives her lunch money to two African American 
African-American children and their African-American mother for over a month so that they will have something to eat and brain fuel at school is labeled a racist. And she's retweeting herself saying how one time she gave some money to a, a, a mom and her two kids and then she tagged the president of the United States. Works beside an African-American man named Randy while she's still a child who teaches her how to farm and drive a tractor is still labeled a racist. Chooses an African-American professional woman to represent her years ago is labeled a racist. Is attacked by a different African-American male and gets into a street fight while she is sleeping on the streets is labeled a profiler and a racist. Gets raped in an 18-wheeler by an African-American male when she was homeless is accused of profiling and labeled a racist. Dates African-American and African men is labeled a racist. Draws her weapon and puts her life on the line to protect an African girl and her friends whose house was broken into by a white male with bad intentions is, is labeled a racist. A white male with bad intentions? Why is that ringing alarm bells for me? Like I obviously if he's breaking into somebody's house he doesn't have good intentions. Why did we say that piece? Why did we take time to type that? Breaks up a fight between two grown African-American women pulling each other's weaves out. Oh for God's sake Lauren. And hurting one another at a fair over something that our children did in school is labeled a racist. Writes about slavery to stop gatekeeping and educate others because in volume two Nova's other option was to lose her power to wield, move, grow, shrink, and control the sun to the Brimstonians. 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 Oh for God's sake what is this light lark? Is accused of fantasizing about slavery and being a racist. Oh! I think that it was the way that you wrote about slavery, but okay. Writes positively about a black man named Rebel who disguises himself during the Civil War and sneaks into Confederate camps to slit the throats of soldiers is labeled a racist. Why did you name him Rebel? Confronts a black independent author with over a thousand more followers than her, is ignored, and has her whiteness tweeted about disrespectfully and is labeled, what? guess what, a racist. Has her whiteness tweeted about disrespectfully. Yes. By God, we should respect the whiteness. Chooses the name Nova for her main character after her close friend's African-American baby girl is named Nova. She uses an African-American doctor to provide medical care for her after her cancer treatments when she lived up north but is labeled a racist. And S.A. Cosby, who we love here, said to her, do you think having a black character in your work is a talisman against being racist? Slave owners had servants in their household. She said, and people in Africa had slave traders amongst their race. Do you think I would read stuff like this if I wasn't against it happening again? Is made fun of and categorized as a racist bad author on a grand scale that amounts to over 4 million views. I could go on, but somehow I'm the one who owes an apology here. Sorry, but I don't think so. That's right, y'all. Lauren is the victim here. Her whiteness was disrespected. Her words. Problem is, Lauren has been exactly who you thought she was this whole time. Long before this epic temper tantrum over literally nothing, she was already having bad takes. Like multiple, completely unintelligent, anti-choice takes. You know who I don't want opinions about my medical care from? Lauren, who can't write and has terrible takes about literally everything. I actually don't want to hear it. I don't care. I don't want to hear about your opinions on my medical care. Thank you so much. Not to mention the racism, constant pro-Trump takes, and yeah, more racism. This is a tweet from President Biden who said, I had a chance to meet with my advisory commission on advancing educational equity, excellence, and economic opportunity for Black Americans. It's time every Black American had the chance to learn, grow, and thrive in school. That's what this team represents. And Lauren just decided that this was just unacceptable. She said, where is the team for white Americans? Where is the team for Asian Americans? Where is the team for Hispanic Americans? Where is the team in general, Mr. President? They're at the White House patting their pockets. You'd do better entertaining the children you want to help. Now listen, I don't like Joe Biden. I am very far left and he is not. And I don't like him. I don't like him for a lot of reasons. But this tweet is fucking stupid. Despite bringing up Asian Americans here on October 26th, Lauren then ignores the play of Asian Americans three days later and in fact exacerbates the problem of anti-Asian racism by saying, I love the idea of Trump winning the 2024 election, but I am concerned that he can't see one particular fact. He keeps reiterating that America was never attacked or in danger like this when he was in president. Pretty sure we all remember COVID sent to us with love from China. Nice work, Lauren. Definitely not racist to contribute to misinformation that has caused uptick in anti-Asian racism and xenophobia, including hate crimes. Great work. Protect and serve. Am I right? Nice. Don't worry. I'm sure she'll definitely bring up the two times she's been nice to an Asian American before as proof that she is uh, super not racist. Don't forget y'all that three days prior to this, she brought up Asian Americans in response to African Americans being brought up. And out of the kindness of her heart, Lauren wanted to use the Asian American community as a whataboutism. Truly heroic. But now Lauren's gone fully mask off because as of the 28th of December, she said in regards to uh, New York City preparing 
to use drones, robots, and bomb stuffing dogs to defend against pro-Palestine protesters for the New Year's Eve ball drop, she said, it's just going to get worse because the border is open. They are bringing war to our doorstep because we let our guard down. Okay, that's concerning that you think these things and also say them out loud. Marv's agent came back in seeing Lauren's greatest temper tantrum and said to, in response to Lauren M. Davis's accusation of plagiarism against my client, Marv Michael Anson, I've reviewed Lauren's chapter and concept as supplied via email and have found no similarities to Marv's forthcoming novel. Sun magic is not a copyrightable concept and has been featured in various forms and stories and mythologies throughout the ages, including Marv's own Yoruba culture. I have responded similarly to Lauren's email. If Lauren has any further concerns, I welcome her to be in touch with our agency directly and ask her to refrain from further public comment on my client or her work. But Lauren would not be taking that suggestion, despite, you know, finally a voice of reason after so much noise from Lauren. Fortunately, as you may have predicted, Lauren was not happy about this tweet. So she tried contacting Alex Field of Bindery, the agency, who the agency that represents Marv. And then she started tweeting at Kesia, Marv's agent. Dear Kesia, First Amendment. Also, I saw the massive cleanup you and your client did on their ex after promoting my blacklisting. I'm sure your DMs, texts, and emails are full of hashtag Sungate. I saw how five writers you extended offers to turned you down without having another deal author offered to them. And I saw that your agency is run out of a house in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and that business is not registered with the Colorado Secretary of State's office. Oh, this has become so unhinged. And that the agency's ex has only been active since May of this year. <gasps> That's a crime in a definitely real universe that you have zero clients you represent listed in your query tracker list, that you do not have any signed authors or books you promote on your website. Then why did you query Kesia? That all of your agency's podcasts do not promote signed authors you represent, that you provide no contact info save an email anyone could pay and to create on your site. And that's when your business name for the binary agency returns on an email, it returns under Alex's name who I personally called Saturday, not a, on a business name and your, not yours. Sorry, I, uh, the dyslexia is bad. Do not tell me who to defend my representation, my reputation. Oh my God. Do not tell me not to defend my reputation or concerns. You may have books listed on your site today, but you did not before this. And guess what? Looks none of the authors from books you have li listed tell anywhere that they are represented by your agency. This was never just about sun powers, but that is what social media saw and ran with. No, that's what you tweeted here. It was about having all the same tropes and plot synopsis as my series. Having listened to this book talker review the book, it does not sound anything even remotely close to Marv's book, which I'm actually interested in. So I don't know what to tell you. This has been about another independent author making a large genre hop, something most authors don't do unless it's to write an autobiography or writing a help book. What? What? Sean and McGuire is looking at this like, what? Who? Huh? And suddenly adding romance to her story within the last four months, according to this article. Okay, sometimes the story evolves. What? Her story features a character without sun magic, something Nova does not have either, but spends the novella and the second volume uncovering and discovering from the god. I would have never posted my work for the public, but if I knew, if I had kept it unpublished, everyone would say I plagiarized from her. No, you, the stories don't seem to sound anything remotely similar, given the backstory of all that happens before before we get to Nova having sun magic, like all that shit with Avril and the slavery, and there's also like an elf involved. It doesn't sound anything remotely close to Marv's story. Nobody would have accused you of plagiarism. I couldn't even approach Bindery about the rest of my concerns because they fueled this blacklisting fire of someone accusing them of plagiarism. Um, this, this, accusing them of that, that's a good chance that you're gonna get yourself in legal trouble. She should probably stop now. For those of you saying, I can't find tweets supporting this, how convenient that they were deleted, but that I have screenshots. Doesn't that sound, stand out as sus to you? This sounds very, how do you do fellow kid? Hey, you stole my work that I spent 10 years putting together. She's racist and attacking a more successful author. She's another Kate Corain who I actually feel sorry for now. What? Because if this is the sort of judgment circulating in the author community, I can see why she lost her ever loving wince. She didn't lose her wits. How dare I have an imagination? Nobody says that you're at fault for having an imagination. Maybe I was wrong about Alex not having a pre-registered business in Colorado, but the man works for Penguin. He knows what game he is playing. And if his business is small enough to run out of a house, he knew I was calling him and chose to ignore the voicemail. That's why I pointed that fact out in a previous tweet. This is so unhinged. If y'all had just read Nova's playlist, you would have seen that Avril, the white girl, 
girl on the cover who's from 1787. Wait, Avril's white? I'm confused. Has her stole, soul stolen as well? Also, Nova ra was rapidly written out of slavery in both the novella and the second volume stories. I don't understand her books at all. I don't, I don't understand. I don't, I don't understand. And I've read so many of her tweets. I should have a good understanding by now. I was not trying to send her back so she and her mother could be slaves. I sent her back to get her close to meeting Avril who would become her sibling rival because one was meant to control the moon while the other the sun. What? Also Nova re refers to herself as white girl in Nova's playlist because it's a reference to the final girl trope because someone stalks her to her flat and she feels like an idiot for opening the door to see who, her, who it was. That is why the two words are in quotes. What? For those of you upset because Sungate is back, I have every right to defend my writing and reputation. It's sad that y'all see, all y'all see is race here when I've got three people from the UK telling an American what to do. Ha, I'm sorry, do I need to yell 1776 victim all over social media? What? She provides a sample of her work. Angry te tears spilled over Nova's cheeks and she knew she had to, to run away. You didn't even fix the typo. Before slavery became her fate, she tore her eyes from her mother's dead body and glanced down, unfolding the handkerchief in her hands. More tears fell from her eyes onto the cloth. A ring of twelve five-pointed stars were sewn into a red square in the left-hand corner. Outside of the red square was a white background sp sporting a blue eagle. A sliver of hope lit her mind. A sliver of hope lit her mind. No, no, that's a bad sentence. This had to be the flag of her true homeland. homeland. If only she knew what the place was called, then she could travel there. Oh my god. <laughs> It's really bad. For those of you saying, oh, they didn't have access to your writing. Yes, they did. I was really stupid and tweeted that I used Apple products back in 2020. Also in my author leak was my Apple ID password and my damn password because I was using my character's name Nova Trace as my dadgum password, which was really dumb. What the fuck is an author leak? Am I missing something? I wasn't thinking. Well, that's a, <laughs> oh, that is a trend. I'll tell you what. All of my writings were stored in Apple pages. Also, I kept getting a login notification from Apple saying that my account was being ac accessed from San Francisco. Maybe it was some kind of cellular issue or maybe it was a hack. Lauren at this point has seemingly created a wild conspiracy theory. That's the only logical explanation I can think of. This reminds me of my biological father who we will call James. Um, I don't speak to James but he is a massive right winger quite like Lauren who tweets the most ridiculous and nonsensical things but also says them in real life. One time I called him and I was like are you coming to your grandson's soccer game or no? He's like yeah but I need directions. I can't. I'm, I'm on the way there and I don't know where to go. And I'm like, are, am I not calling you on an iPhone? Are you, are you not answering this on your iPhone? And he said, yes. I said, you have GPS, James. And he said, yes, but I can't turn it on. And I said, why can't you turn on your GPS, James? He said, because they're tracking me. And I said, who's tracking you, James? And he said, the government, because the government has a target on the backs of old white men. And I said, okay. And I told him, you can go ahead and call your other daughter. She has more patience than I do. <laughs> Anyways, we don't talk anymore. <laughs> For those of you re review bombing my book that you haven't actually read, please stop. Any writing on my website that it is not what my novel Nova's playlist contains. This book was never meant to go viral. If I thought it could, I would have hired an editor before publishing it. You didn't hire an editor? You didn't hire an ed- You didn't hire- You published a an unedited book? You- On purpose? Okay, fine. Fine. Whatever. Fine. So yeah, Lauren got review bombed. Her book is that like a one point something or other. Um, but also Amazon decided not to sell her ebook anymore, which Lauren has decided is book banning. And I take that personally because <laughs> I don't like when people talk about book banning incorrectly. Writes a novel with scripture in it. Book gets banned. Name it quickly. Name it quickly. Which book? Name it quickly. Mm, too late because you're lying. Supports Israel. Book gets banned. Makes fun of Crooked Joe. Books get banned. Who? Quickly. Say it quick. Mm, nope. Didn't happen. Previously served in a red state. Served what? Alcohol? What are you talking about? Served what? You served as a cop? you served you served I'm sorry I just a cop seriously book gets banned and the author who wrote it without AI is accused of being racist oh lol your book's not banned which is what I told her see this is where I took things personally because my personal pet peeve is when people who don't actually care about book banning which is a real and serious problem that I talk about a lot um, decide that they have suddenly decided to care about book banning but only the version of book banning that they have created in their mind which is a completely incorrect usage of the term book banning which already has 
has a definition. And see, Lauren doesn't care about book banning. I checked. Uh, as you can see, the only times that she's ever brought up bans are gun bans. So I explained this to her, and I don't like doing authors behaving badly where I <laughs> talk to the author. I prefer uh, not to do that. <laughs> I make an exception for this one who incorrectly uses book banning, though. Your book isn't banned. Please don't misuse the term book banning in this asinine tantrum you are having, especially because you and I both know you do not care about book banning. It has a definition. Don't redefine words just because you're having a tantrum. Rachel, I contacted Amazon several times and they have in fact made it so I cannot sell that version of the book anymore. So yes, it is banned. I used to sell banned books for a living, so I know what the term means. Eh, wrong, wrong. I don't think you did used to sell banned books for a living. And no, that is not what the term means. And you don't get to decide that that's what the term means just because you used to have a job that I don't think you actually had. Amazon made a business decision not to carry a product. That's not book banning. So I said, <laughs> the urge to pull a Nora Roberts, I have personally explained the process to you, Deborah. You did not sell banned books for a living and Amazon a business choosing not to stock your ebook is categorically not book banning. It has a definition. That is not it. Book banning, a form of censorship, occurs when private individuals, government officials, or organizations remove books from libraries, school reading lists, or bookstore shelves because they object to their content, ideas, or themes. It is not when a business chooses not to stock an ebook while still carrying the physical copy. Saying this makes you look really stupid. You should stop. I stand by that. Amazon choosing not to sell your ebook because they just don't want to sell it is a business decision. They're still selling the other formats of your book, by the way. Not on any level is removing your ebook from Amazon book banning. Book banning would mean that someone else with authority, not Amazon itself, stepped in and said to Amazon, you cannot stock this because we object to the material for one reason or another. If you've never heard of Anthony Comstock, that was a great time time to Google Anthony Comstock, the original book banner in the United States who weaponized the government to enact his own puritanical bullshit beliefs on others. Anthony Comstock is the legacy of Moms for Liberty. Fuck both of them. I can't leave this without touching on the AI art shit. It's really fucking shitty to use AI art generators to make your book covers. If you need a book cover, if you're gonna sell a book, you cannot use AI art in good conscience. It's also like a huge double standard to be complaining about copyrighted ideas ideas and then using stolen art in your, and also it looks like absolute shit. I mean, my God, it really looks bad. If you need a book cover and you can't pay an artist, Canva exists. This book looks like shit. <laughs> I can show you an example of a book that I have and it's this one. It's She'll Find Me by Lake and Meng. This is, I believe it's YA and this is a self-published book and it's a queer, I think coming of a story slash romance. This was done with Canva and you can look up like, like what you can and can't use on Canva, but Canva has a whole template where you can make book covers on there. Is this the best book cover I've ever seen? No, but it certainly, certainly looks better than whatever the fuck this is supposed to be. I can actually read this. This is difficult to read. And it also does not convey what's inside the book. This does. This might sell. This will not. The absolute and complete irony of complaining about copyrighted material while using an AI art generator to then sell a book is just a complete double standard. It's comical. And then also trying to claim that the owner of Marv's agency is a con artist and claiming, I know a con when I see one, I was a cop. You know a con when you see one? This woman voted for Donald Trump. Donald Trump, court case after court case. You know a con when you see one and then you keep voting for one? Please. Lauren is still going as of today. I mean, she's just gonna continue eventually. She probably will fizzle out as they tend to do. I mean, think about back months ago, people were like, oh, this is rage baiting when we were talking about, uh, what's that guy's name? with the Manic Pixie Dream Girl book. Nate Lemke. People were like, this is rage baiting. It's not. It really is just people acting ridiculously and throwing temper tantrums and eventually it, they fizzle out and then we don't think about them ever again or we think about them, you know, every six months or so when somebody else fucks up similarly. Th these things happen. Eventually she'll probably fizzle out. So please go check out Marv's book. I'm very excited about it. Again, if your comp title is Ember in the Ashes, you already have my attention. I'm very excited and I wish Marv all the success I am so sorry that this happened and I hope that this encourages other authors to not act like this, not use AI art, and remember that shutting the fuck up is free, okay? All right, thanks so much for watching. Leave your comments and questions down below. Leave the links to Marv's books down below. I wish her very happy release this year and also shout out to Marv's agent for... <laughs> 
<laughs> both of them handling this in stride because wow what a mess I would not have been able to handle it that well all right thank you so much leave your comments thanks for watching see you next time bye hello before I go I have to say thank you for being a friend to my therapy bills patrons oh actually I have to show you something because somebody made me something Vienna made me a golden girls bag because thank you for being a friend and the inside is gay so I thank you shout out Vienna I'm very excited about this okay thank you for being a friend to my therapy bills patrons and those are Alexander Brittany Bo Bittany Cammie Chris Christine and Bean DJ Rocktopus Ellie Emperor's New Blues Aaron with two E's Eric JC Jack and Jill John E Julie D Casey McKenzie Kate W Caitlin M Quinn Lady Kitty Bug Lex Night Owl Reader Alice Rain, Reese, SJ, Samar, Scarlet, Shiny, SMK, the em epic feminist side eye of Carlos. Hi, Peggy. Hello. <laughs> Thank you all so much for being a friend. I appreciate you. Happy New Year. Thank you for being here. Okay, goodbye. And last but not least, I have to say thank you for being a friend to my Potato Social Marxist patrons, and those are Alicia, Amanda, Andy, Angelica, Anita, Artie the Ninth, Ashley H, Ava, Ballads and Bookends, Beck, Blythe, Bookish Bats, Bookish Brain Rot, Bree, Caitlin, Cardinal Ginger, Carlin, Casper, Catherine, Kathy, Chris, CJ, Cole, Colleen, Corwin, Corey, Darren, Deborah, Dex, Diet Goth, Dorotea, Ebby, Emerald Dodge, Emily A, Emily L, Emma, Aaron, Ezra Moon, Fiona, Hannah C, Hannah T, Harpy Kuro, Haley G, India Inks, JM Tennant, J is on Olympus, JT, Jen Michelle, Gender Queer, Jenny G, Jillian, Jojo Bookish, Jess Pugsley, Kat, Catherine, Katie, Katya, Kayala, Kendra, Kiara, Kylie, Laughing Cat Dog, Lazarus Ray, Library of Scars, Lisa B, LP, Lou Siri, Lustful Octopus, Martin, MV Marlowe, Madison, Marcella, Marquita, Malara, MK Books, Molly, James, Nat, Natalie, Never, Nicole G, Nicole R, Nyan Binary, Paige P, Penny Chilling, Fox Glove, Pixel Stars, Rachel B, Reba, Rebecca, Rivi, Rosie Thorne, Rowan, Sicoria, Sadie, Samantha M, Sarah C, Sarah H, Sarah the Bear, Sarah Z, Shamed, Shannon, Sheen Onion, Sean, Talia, Three Old Dogs, Tina, Toast, Trash Can Teddy, Taito Phoenix, and Writer A. Thank you all so much for being a friend. Thank you.